Let's bring you up a little bit. That should do. All right, guys. I have been meaning to make this video for, well, since the beginning of the year, because it was kind of like my New Year's resolution to do more vlogs and more chilled videos because I love making them. And here we are on the 18th, yeah, 18th of February, and I still haven't filmed it. But anyway, we're not gonna berate ourselves. We're gonna just start where we are, meet ourselves where we're at, and improve from here. Basically, I have so much to talk to you guys about. Every day I have things coming up, I have ideas, I come across resources, I have a conversation with someone, and I'm like, I need to share it with you guys, or I want to talk to you about it. And when I sit down in front of the camera, basically I forget everything that I wanted to talk about. But alas, I'm hoping that over the course of this video, I will just remember most of these things that I wanted to talk about. Now, one thing that I definitely felt like I wanted to touch on, I'm just gonna move you down a touch, there we go, was about my work. And I kind of just want to talk it out, you know, get it off my mind and try to talk out my plans. Because I think if I could sum up the first six or seven weeks of this year, it would be, and this is not in a negative way, but chaotic. It just feels like it has been chaotic. And I wanted to come into this year, I'm a huge New Year's resolution type person. I love New Year's, I love new starts, new beginnings, I love a new week, everything like that. So for me, I came into this year thinking, I really want to not be constantly running around chasing my tail. I want to be a bit more efficient with what I'm doing. I want to be more focused with what I'm doing because last year it just felt like life stopped. I had a good year in a lot of ways. Sorry, I'm just looking at this plant over here and it is, it's dying. I need to give it some water, one second. It's very, very sad and sorry for itself. Right, I think I can continue now that is off my mind and I don't have to look at it. Now, last year, I feel like I just stopped living in a lot of ways. I was working a lot. Again, I was just constantly chasing my tail and trying to do a million things at once. Josh was ill for a lot of the year and that was quite stressful. My back injury, obviously, at the very beginning of the year was at its worst and I was going through that recovery process. And then, of course, we all went through a pandemic as well. So I feel like by the end of the year, I just felt super exhausted and I was really looking forward to starting a new year, starting afresh and feeling like I really had a good grip on everything that I was doing. And like I say, we've gotten to about six or seven weeks in and I just feel like I'm constantly chasing my tail and that my life is a bit chaotic. And there's probably two reasons for that. One is because I'm still a bit confused about work and then the second is because I wanted to start living my life and for me that looked like working but not to the point of burnout like I did just before I went to Croatia and being able to do things that I love so obviously I love calisthenics and it's a bit weird because that is one aspect of my job and my job becomes my hobby and my hobby is my job and it gets a little bit blurred line. But the other thing that I really love doing, I just haven't been able to do because of those reasons I mentioned before, is being outdoors. I love hiking, I love traveling, I love exploring, I love trying new things. Even if it's something that I've never done before, like skiing or if I wanted to go surfing or, you know, I love going out on the skateboard, even though I'm not very good at it. And I got some roller skates for my birthday last year and I have not been able to go out on those either. I just feel so happy when I'm doing these things. And so I really wanted to put that into my year. I wanted to make that a focus and something that I was doing regularly because I know how fulfilled that, me that makes me. And it's that typical thing of you need to fit your own oxygen mask before you help others. And I felt like last year I just well and truly stopped doing that. I was just pouring from an empty cup. And for me, refilling that cup looks like making sure I invest time in the things that really, really make me happy. And that is going outdoors, being in the mountains, hiking, traveling, exploring, adventuring, rock climbing, all those sort of good things. So at the beginning of the year, I was like, yes, this is it. I've got this nail, this is exactly what I'm gonna do. And just before New Year's, I sat down and had a coffee with one of my girlfriends and I said to her, do you set New Year's resolutions? This is literally like a question I ask everybody because I just love hearing about it. And she said she didn't, but what she did do was booked or planned something for every month of the year, so she had something to look forward to. And I thought that was a really, really good idea. So I sat down with the calendar and I started booking things in, making sure I had things planned and things to look forward to. So it would kind of bring that work-life balance back into balance a little bit. 
And it all looked really good, but then I realised very quickly that when I start doing those things, and for me, my job is seven days a week. I work seven days a week. So if I even take one or two, but usually it's just one day off to go hiking. And I went out for a coffee with my mum and I was chatting about it and she was like, well, something's got to give. What can give? And I was, I was like, the only thing that I can give away is the things that I'm doing that I enjoy in terms of those additional like oxygen mass type tasks. And she was under the impression that I just can't do that because last year I did do that and look where it got me. So that is basically my predicament. And this is in absolutely no way complaining. I'm just sort of talking out loud, hoping that I will make sense of it and I will answer my own questions. But that being said, I feel like in the last week, I'm starting to get a clearer vision of where I'm going and what I'm doing and it's all coming back to the question why and this is something that I say to to anyone you know if they're looking to lose weight get into fitness they are beating themselves up and having a bad time with body image or whatever it might be even if it's career you always have to come back to why and if you have a strong enough why it makes it so much easier to be able to fill in all the missing pieces and put the jigsaw together. And so I was thinking about this the other morning on one of my walks. I was like, why do I do what I do? And I've always had a very, very clear reason as to why I do what I do. And that is, if I can in some way make one person's day better, whether it's something that I say, if it's that they can relate to something that I've been through, if it makes someone feel a little bit less alone, if it answers a question that they've been asking themselves, if it brings two strangers together in some weird wacky way like social media or coaching and training does, whatever it may be, every single thing that I do, I do it with the intention that it, if it helps one person, it's worthwhile doing. And so I came back to that and I was reflecting on how I can do that best within my capacity. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because if someone came up to me on the street and said, what do you do for work? I would say I'm a personal trainer. That is my main job. I'm a personal trainer who happens to work online now. So all my clients live all over the world and that is my main job. Now, additional to that is all the other things. And so we've got things like creating my eBooks or creating any products that I want to put onto my website that people can then download and keep and use as a resource. And then we've got the app. So with the app, I'm consistently working on it, updating it, coming up with new programs, filming them, editing them, uploading them, making sure that they are right, talking to people on the app, managing all that aspect of things. Like I literally do all that myself. And then of course there's YouTube and any additional social media channels. I film everything myself. I edit everything myself. I very badly do the thumbnails myself. <laughs> It's like the, the bane of my life is thumbnails. You think it's gonna be easy until you try and create one and it's just, and then there's everything else that I wish I could do. Like there's some things, and I think this is what I find I struggle with the most is I go with the intention of helping one person or multiple people. And I want so badly to be able to help every single person, but I just don't have the capacity. And bearing in mind that coaching always has to be my number one priority because those are the people that have chosen me as their coach. They're putting their trust in me. They are working hard and I'm there to support them and I want to be there to support them. So that always has to be like my number one priority. And then everything else, and it kind of just, it, it's just this constant subconscious feeling like I'm letting people down. Like I just feel like I'm letting people down. And I don't know because there's this weird balance between being a personal trainer or a coach and that taking up, you know, a significant amount of your time. And additionally, that's like individual, that's one-on-one, -on -one, that's personal, you're creating relationships with people. And then on the other side, it's the mass numbers. So with YouTube or Instagram, for example, there's a lot of people following me who I will never get an opportunity to speak necessarily to face to face or one to one, but I equally want to be able to provide help to those people as well. And I don't want to give either of them up because I love them both equally and I want to be able to help both in the same capacity, but then juggling it is so hard. It's like you either have to choose one or the other. And if you don't choose one or the other, 
then you're doing both at a suboptimal level. This is getting a bit deep. <laughs> but it's just, and then, it, and then it basically causes this sort of subconscious feeling of like just constantly catching your tail, feeling like I'm letting people down, feeling like there's so many things. I know there are so many things that I could do that would help and I just don't have the ability. I literally just don't have the ability to do it. Like when I went to Croatia last August, for the first two or three days, I just, there was, day, like, there was hours where I just cried because I just felt so conflicted. I felt so wrong not working. And I was just, to me, that was like the red flag of going, you need to put some type of priority into yourself. Like how can I be saying all these things about prioritizing yourself and making sure that you are the most important thing and being selfish in a good way and yet you can't even do it. You're not practicing what you preach. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense. And so what is my point? My point is, I guess, that I'm trying to avoid getting back to that, but I'm also now struggling with how I can balance the two and make them both work and put as much as I possibly can into both of them to help as many people as possible because it is the best job in the world to be able to see one person's life improve, whether that's based on something they've watched or something that you've actually done with them personally. It's the most amazing job. And I appreciate every single comment and message and email and application for coaching. And, and even just if someone has subscribed and is there watching my videos, and supporting me because I'm hoping that you will have seen that I have changed and developed and built my confidence and I've worked on things like my filming. I mean, it's still not great. I'm still working on it, but things like that, like I'm slowly improving too. And if you've been there supporting that or even just watching that, I, I cannot thank you enough. I, um, I honestly feel like the luckiest person in the world to do I'm getting emotional. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not getting emotional. I am the luckiest person in the world to do what I do. I just want to be able to make the most of it. That's all. That's what it is. So before I turn into, I am on my period, so maybe that's why I'm feeling quite emotional. <laughs> but before I turn into a blubbering mess, I actually have, I just got a notification. I've got a check-in call with a client in 20 minutes. So I'm going to have to jump off this camera, which is probably a good thing. I mean, I'll stop talking. But in summation of what I'm saying, I've been thinking about all these things. And in terms of YouTube, I'm, I'm not gonna change anything. I would love to be able to vlog a little bit more because there's so many things, like I say, in my week that I come across and I think, I wanna talk to you guys about that, but maybe it's not enough for an entire video, but it's so relevant to either health, fitness, mindset, body image, calisthenics, training, weight loss, which is obviously everything that I talk about, everything that I do. I want to vlog more but I don't think I can set myself like a specific, I'm going to do this every week or I'm going to do this every fortnight. And then in terms of the coaching aspect, I will take on more clients. I've had a wait list now for so, so long and I just haven't had the ability to take on more clients. I will take on more clients, but I want to change the structure of my coaching so that it's a lot more inclusive of all the different channels. So for example, if you're a member of the app, then you get access to a community where I can do more in-depth information. So obviously the app is a subscription. And then with coaching, obviously you get me and you get checking calls regularly and you get personalized programs. We chat most days and I literally see my clients as friends. So you'd have that aspect, but then you also have access to this. So if you wanted to watch me do a talk about whatever the topic may be, let's say about the menstrual cycle, uh, then you can jump in on that or you can have that community aspect. Because for me, the number one thing, as well as being able to help people, is to be able to bring people together. I think the biggest thing that's missing in health and fitness is huge, is community and that social aspect of it. It's so ironic that social media is so prevalent that I feel like so many people are so lonely and they feel alone in their journeys as well. And if I have the ability to bring people together, then I feel like I have a responsibility to do that. Plus, I love having friends as well. I love chatting to you guys and being able to be a part of the conversation and I learn so much from, from you as well. So that is kind of where I want to go, but that's gonna take me a while to work out and do all the nitty gritty behind the scenes work for it. So the plan of action is 
It's 10.30 now, I've been on my morning walk, I've done a few emails, I've gotten ready for the day because that's another thing I need to talk to you about is my skin, but I'll save it for another chat. I'm gonna jump on this check-in call and then I'm gonna go to the gym, I think, quickly, get in a session, come back, eat my lunch, go to the office, do a good several hours of work, then I've got another check-in call and then we'll see what happens from there. Anyway, I hope this has not been a super boring conversation. I feel a lot better having chatted through it, even if I am just chatting to a camera. I feel like I can imagine people on the other side of it listening. And if you have any ideas or anything that you would like to see or anything that you've thought, this doesn't exist and I think this would be really helpful, just let me know because yeah, I'm in that sort of development phase and I'm, I'm so motivated to do it. It's just having the ability and the capacity to do it, that's all it is. So we're gonna do that. Right, I've said I'm gonna be quiet about four times now and I haven't. Hugo's here and I don't think you've seen him in a while. He is huge now. <laughs> He's about seven and a half, maybe eight kilos last time the vet saw him. But he is doing well. Look how brown he's gotten. He's so brown in the face now, aren't you? But he's still got a ni nice white tummy. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you this because it made me smile. So cute. Someone tagged me in this on Instagram overnight saying I should do this with Hugo. I'll just let you watch it one second. How cute is that? To be honest with you, I don't think I, let alone Hugo, have the grace, poise, or coordination to do something like that, but it put a huge smile on my face. That is so cute. Anyway, I'm going to zip it, go and get my computer, and I will chat to you guys in a little bit. Good morning, it is Sunday morning. I just got back from my walk, which is why I'm in a good mood. And uh, I've just been doing some adult household chores, all that boring stuff this morning. But I wanted to quickly jump on here while I was getting ready and talk about my skin because I've had a bit of a psoriasis flare up, as you guys can see, especially on my forehead at the moment. So it's here, you can't really see it there, but on my neck as well and uh, all over my face, but mainly on my forehead. So with my psoriasis, I did make a video on it last year and I don't blame anyone if they don't get through it because I talked a lot in that video. It's something I've been trying to work on is just be a little bit more concise with when I speak. But anyway, essentially psoriasis is incurable and I often get messages related to that video asking how I cured my psoriasis, how I have cleared my skin completely and I haven't. I, I manage my psoriasis a lot better than it used to be, but I still get flare-ups throughout the year and I can usually attribute it to something or a trigger that's happened. So for example with this one, I think this is a combination of diet, so maybe eating a few things over Christmas, New Year's and the last couple of weeks that I really shouldn't be eating in such quantities because I know trigger my skin. Stress, because I've been going through some stressful things at the moment which are just ongoing, so they're continuously there and also the weather. So it's obviously been pretty cold. It's been winter here in the UK and we're just starting to come out of that now, but it's been months and months of really cold, dry, and then rainy weather as well. So it kind of hammers your skin and then the stress hammers my immune system. So that's why I think I've got this flare up. And I particularly noticed that I will get a flare up on my forehead when it is related to stress or diet rather than on my body. Cause my body's actually not too bad at the moment. So I've got a few, a few little bits here. I've got some bits around the side here, but my back is pretty clear, I think. There's a few little spots, but I mean, I'm always going to have, just ignore that, that's from my hot water bottle. But yeah, there's a few little spots here and there. But other than that, even on my arms, I think, I've got a big one that came up here on my arm. And I have a new piece here as well that's come up, but actually kind of looks like it's healing a little bit. Anyway, I digress. I think I know what the triggers are, but I just really wanted to share with you that I do have psoriasis still, I do have flare-ups, they do happen. Another question that I get a lot in relation to my psoriasis is how do I not let it upset me? How do I just go about my day and just get on with it if it does flare up? And the answer is, I find it very hard. It does upset me, it like really, really upsets me. It stresses me out, but because stress is one of the biggest triggers for me, I know, and I felt this before, if I get upset over it, let's say I cry or I really think about it too much, I notice my skin start to burn and itch straight away. So it's kind of doing me a disservice to let myself get stressed out about it. 
it doesn't mean it's easy and it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It definitely, definitely does. And this last week I've just been feeling so, I don't want to use the word demotivated, but just a bit like very blur. And I'm trying my best just to distract myself, to get stuck into work. And there's certain things that I will do when I have a flare up to help me. Cause I think being proactive in treating it or looking after yourself goes a long way to helping you feel like you have that control back. Because I feel like with autoimmune diseases, you can feel very, very alone and like you don't have any control and that's not the case. So some of the things I've been doing, I've been really tightening up my diet and that kind of plays into this video because I was gonna show you what I eat in a day, but to be honest with you, it's not an accurate representation of what I would normally eat in a day. Like I mentioned when Josh was in hospital at the end of last year, I started to eat less and I just wasn't finding the time to get food in. So my priority was just getting some protein to add into those meals and snacking on like higher protein snacks as well, just to try and bulk them out, make sure I was still getting enough protein, trying to add a few more calories in. So you might see some really weird concoctions in my meals today and that is basically the reason why I'm just trying to increase what I'm eating, make sure that I'm getting a decent amount of protein in and on top of that at the moment being super hyper vigilant with the foods that I am eating so I know certain dietary triggers for my skin and I need to avoid those like the plague at the moment and there's certain things that I can have but I just need to be mindful of the quantities for example caffeine so I am still drinking coffee but I know specific coffees that particularly make my skin sore and inflamed and some that I can get away with drinking a bit more of, but then I try and balance out with making sure that I'm hydrated because that is super important too. But really, as much as this is painful physically, the struggle I have the most with psoriasis, and I know that a lot of psoriasis sufferers have this as well, is just the mental impact it has on you because you just can't hide it. Like it's, it's there and you try and cover it up and that's painful or you can't really cover it up. And you, again, you feel like you have no control. And so that's the reason I just try to distract, distract, distract. I know it's not gonna do me any good to be sitting and thinking about it all the time. So I will get myself out of the house. I will go to the gym. I will go and work in a different location. I will go see friends because generally having a good laughing session or having a great chat with someone and you forget about all these concerns you come back and you already notice that it started to settle down just slightly and of course it's constantly changing but that really helps as well and then I do things like this so that mirror would usually face a direction that I could see it quite often and what I've done is I've moved it so I don't see it as easily so when I'm getting ready in the morning I won't be constantly checking because that is something that I always used to do is I would check 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 I would feel my skin I would look in the mirror every time I walked past the mirror I would look and it's just this constant reminder this constant added stress which is not going to help in terms of me calming my immune system down. At the end of the day, the symptom of psoriasis is that my skin is inflamed and that my skin cells are regenerating quickly and you see these red plaques. But the actual cause is my immune system. It's a genetic disorder that cannot be cured and I will have my entire life. And so I need to think about it in terms of reducing stress on my immune system as much as possible. And stress comes in a lot of forms. That means prioritizing sleep, it means making sure that you're hydrated, it means not training too hard, or at least giving your body some time to rest. It's talking about dietary stress, all these different factors. And this is something that I worked a lot on when I was at university and I was studying immunopathology, and that's what really got me thinking and managing my psoriasis in a totally different way. But anyway, if you want any more information, you can check out the video I made if you can really get through. I think it was like 40 minutes long. It was pretty long, but ultimately, I just wanted to share that I still suffer with flare-ups. I still suffer with psoriasis. I still have it. It just might not be super obvious all the time. And look, I'm sitting a bit further back from the camera now and you can barely see it, but it's there and it's sore. And when I come closer, you can definitely see it as well. I know there's a lot of you guys out there who suffer with psoriasis because I get so many messages. I would say I at least get four or five messages on Instagram alone a day asking me how to deal with psoriasis, looking for any support or answers. And again, it comes back to not being able, just feeling like I'm letting people down, but you're not alone. I'm here with you and I know exactly what you're going through. Like I said, I experienced it. I was hospitalized for it when I was younger and I've had it my entire life. So I know how horrible it is. And likewise, Josh has Crohn's disease, another autoimmune disease. Autoimmune diseases are rubbish. 
they suck. They really, really do, as does so many other things. But there's always a silver lining. I always say to myself, it gives me better empathy for people who are suffering with chronic illnesses and it helps me to lead a healthier life or make healthier choices in terms of lifestyle factors like stress and sleep and stuff like that. Anyway, <laughs> Hughes is here and the plan for today is we're actually going to Ikea. Well, you're not coming, but we're going to Ikea to get a new desktop for my table just because the one I have is a little bit small. So that's where I'm headed now and then I'm probably going to come home, do a bit of work, set that up and head off to the gym. So, looking forward to it. Do you want to do the transition? Let's see. You poor? All right, catch you guys in a bit. Ikea trip was successful, so I've got my desk top here. It's replacing this one, which is really, really tiny. As you can see, this is kind of at my workstation when I'm not at the co-working space. I have this white thing, which I've mentioned before, which is the converter for a stand-up desk. I just got it off Amazon, it's like 70 quid. So I'm definitely keeping that because I nearly always stand at my desk. I would very rarely sit on it. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna put that here and sort out this room a little bit more. Actually. To be honest with you, I did it last weekend and most of it's organized. I just have a load of boxes because I'm that person that holds on to boxes. So I've got to get rid of all of those and I've got some filing to do, all the really fun stuff. And then I might have one more little snack before I go to the gym, otherwise I think I'll be too full. And I might do a little gym session or a big one, I don't know. I can never quite tell whether I'm in the mood or not. Yesterday's one was pretty hard. Today I'm feeling a little bit more energetic. So we'll see, we'll play it by ear and then yeah, get stuck into some more work. So let's get cracking with this. So I forgot to finish the video last night, but I just about remembered to film my dinner just as I was about to eat it. So I had the chicken salad and then I had some dark chocolate and some herbal tea afterwards and then basically I just got into bed and fell asleep because I was pretty tired. But gym session was quite good. It's always nice on a Sunday because it's really quiet in the gym, so I always really like the environment. And now it's Monday morning, I'm going to edit this vlog and get some work bits done. I know that these vlogs are super random and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, sometimes I just have something I want to talk about or something that comes to mind but it's not really worth an entire video on its own and that's kind of what I want to use these for. But really this one was just to talk through some of the things that I've been thinking about, some of the feelings I've been having recently, some of my ideas for the future, to share with you my skin because I know that that helps a lot of people who also struggle with autoimmune diseases and generally with skin issues or anything that makes them feel a little bit self-conscious. Sometimes you can feel really alone with it and also sometimes it can feel like you're just fighting your own body and it's so out of control and I feel that all the time as well but I've learned to... I know that this will pass, I know that this will get better, it's just a matter of time and me stressing about it isn't going to make it any better. 
doesn't mean it's easy to not stress about it because I definitely do but I know it's not going to so I keep coming to that and the silver lining is is that my autoimmune disease gives me empathy for other people who may be struggling and also it helps me live a healthier life you know makes me prioritize sleep or maybe prioritize things that are going to be better for my immune system rather than things that might compromise it and generally manage some of the lifestyle factors that maybe I would neglect such as allowing myself to get stressed as an example. So anyway I'm going to leave this video here, I hope that it helped in some way, you enjoyed it in some way, if you have any comments, ideas, things that crop up, thoughts, anything at all, pop them down below and we can have a little chat, otherwise I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys very very soon. Happy Monday!